Good. There we go. There we go. Good morning, everybody. Lovely to see you all. Thank you for joining us. Um, yeah, welcome this morning. It's great to have you all with us. We're uh, really excited. It's been, it's been we had an amazing couple of, of Sundays in a row, haven't we? We're just really excited to continue that this morning. Uh, there's a couple of us in the, in the group this morning that have quite a lot of um, phlegm, which is a nasty thing to say down the mic. But if you hear a couple of uh, if you hear a couple of um, throats being cleared, then forgive us. Uh, and if we sound a bit flat, then I would blame Graham. But no, I'm really joking. Um, uh, so yeah, we're, I just invite you to stand if you're able, and we're just going to start and just continue in that worship. Just one 
just welcome you here this morning lord we just thank you for your love lord a love that's undeserved lord and yet so abundant and unconditional we just thank you for your love for us this morning father would you give us open hearts and open ears and open hands this morning to receive from you lord jesus amen so welcome and good morning um, I'm Izzy, I'm part of the leadership team at the Lane, if you didn't know me. Happy St. Patrick's Day to all those Irish brothers and sisters. I did not intentionally do this, I'm just <laughs> going to be very candid. Three different people said, thank you for wearing green. I was like, I just like green. But happy St. Patrick's Day anyway to you. Um, we've got lots and lots of notices, so please make sure that you have a look at your notice sheet. So um, this Wednesday, the 20th, is the AGM and Vision Evening at Long Lane Building, not here. It's 7.45 for drinks and eight o'clock um, for the main meeting. Everybody that calls the lane their home um, is really, really welcome and we'd love to see you. It's not being put on Zoom because there were some problems with it last time, so it's not on Zoom. So please, please try and come. Um, it's gonna be exciting and informative. Next Sunday as well, um, there is the Bring and Share lunch. So I think loads and loads of people have signed up. Both of the sheets were completely full, which is wonderful. If you haven't signed up, there is still space to come. Please come. Um, if you would like to come and you, you're not in a position to bring anything, please just come because there will be more than enough, I'm sure. Um, so that's next Sunday, straight after the service at Long Lane um, Building. Right, so we were just singing about there's nothing that God can't do, and that's very timely. We, we have two stories of glory, so um, Shirley and Ange, would you like to come up? 
Yeah, it's welcome and the mop, please. So we've just got another announcement, but I'd prefer Ange to do it because it's much nicer. You can come do yours first. <laughs> Sorry, there you go. Uh, yeah, so it's not really a story of glory, I suppose it is from our family, but Jack uh, proposed this last week, and I think, yeah! <laughs> so Jack and Caitlin are engaged to be married, wedding incoming, end of this year. <laughs> Very nice. Well, um, my stories, um, I I'll give you a bit of background. Um, when I came off the mission field, I got myself into financial difficulties, uh, really financial difficulties, and um, I was losing sleep, not feeling well about it, and a friend recommended CAP. I went through the process of CAP, and they pulled me out of a hole. <laughs> um, and at that point, my dad said to me, would you like me to give you some money for a deposit for a house? So I went along to Halifax, sat down, and the lady looked at me and said, mm -mm, because Barclays Bank had banned me or done something to my credit rating, and nobody would touch me with a barge pole. <laughs> so all that time, my prayer has been, God, I want a front door, a back door, and a garden. And this is a prayer that I have prayed for many years a front door, a back door, and a garden. And secretly, I wanted to, to own part of it, you know, that it was something that, that, that I wanted, but this was just impossible. So I carried on living where I was living, and I, li I lived there for about 20-odd years. And um, I still prayed that prayer, God, I want a front door, a back door, and a garden. And I couldn't see any solution to this. So um, last year, for various reasons, I went to try to get a mortgage again. And they said, oh, you can have um, 97,000. <laughs> what can I buy with that, God? What can I do with that, you know? So I carried on, and um, I happened to be looking at a certain house um, on, on the, on the um, Zoomla, uh, whatever you call it, Zoopla, or, or, and right move. I mean, I just lived on right move. I was just dreaming of this house. But I could never, ever see how that prayer could ever be answered. Um, and um, I suddenly saw this new build. And I thought, oh, let's have a look at that then. And the, it was a shared ownership with Riverside. So I thought, oh, okay, let's fill in the form. So I filled in the form. And then the next thing I knew, I was being contacted by Riverside saying, would you like to come and have a look? And I thought, well, okay. So I went along and I, 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 I looked at it and I, I took um, Carol with me and we're looking at the houses and things. And they said, which one would you like? And I went, really? <laughs> so I, I, I said, well, I, I'll have that one. I want that one. <laughs> and um, needless to say, sort of like I thought, I'll never get a mortgage. Um, I'm 60 years old, they're never going to give me a mortgage, and lo and behold, they gave me a mortgage. So then, I sort of like moved in, in October, and now I have a front door, a back door, and a garden. <laughs> and what I want to say out of that is, if you have, I mean, I've still got a prayer that I'm praying, and I've been praying that longer, but like, I've been praying this prayer at least 15 years. And anyone who was in a prayer session with me at times would hear me say, Lord, I want a front door, back door and garden. And he answered me. He didn't answer me in the way I expected it to, but he answered me and he gave me my heart's desire. And I still cannot believe I can stick a key in a door and walk in and have my own house with a front door, back door and garden. <laughs> Wonderful, thank you. So Carol is clearly the person to take with you if you're looking to buy a house as well. <laughs> um, isn't that great and really encouraging? Thank you, Shirley, um, for sharing that. Um, now we've got two more centenary videos to watch now. And together we've been involved at Long Lane Church for an excess of 80 years. Yeah, 80 years. Um, we might not look it, but we've been there quite a bit. 
considerable amount of time. <laughs> One of the things we've really loved about being uh, in the Fellowship of Long Lane is um, the relationship um, that we've built uh, and the friendships formed uh, completely across all generations, all ages, from 90 down to newborn. Uh, and it's just produced a real special bond in all those age groups. It's been a real special time for us and our family have really benefited from this. Another thing that as we kind of reflect back over the years, um, we're thinking about sort of Sunday morning worship. And when we first joined the church, um, Sunday morning worship was unaccompanied. And we start by saying, um, John Byrne, would you like to start us off? Which seems to be quite a, um, a long way away from where we are now with a fully loaded um, electronic band uh, leading us uh, very effectively each Sunday morning. Um, and we'd probably like to sign off by saying what a fantastic uh, testimony it is that the church is now 100 years old. And um, we trust that uh, God will continue to bless the work um, that's being um, done um, through the, his, his body of people at the church. Okay, hi everyone. Couldn't do this little video with my, my little feathered friend here, keeping me company. This is Angel or Budgie. Yeah, I've been coming to the lane now for about a year and a half, came in January 22. I mean, I knew the church, um, known the church for like 25, 30 years. I've known for a long time quite a few people who go to the church. I knew people here in the 90s. So I was always very much aware of Long Lane Church. Um, but I moved into the Garston Allerton area in May 2019 because I bought a little house with a garden which is what I'd always wanted uh, moved from a flat and then I thought it'd been on my heart for years and years and years uh, to worship locally I'd always worshipped um, since becoming a Christian at 14 I'd always worshipped in churches that weren't local to, to where I lived so um, after lockdown, I'm back to my old church, never quite really sort of settled back into it all. I had visited the lane just before lockdown, see what it was like. I was walking through Garston one day, and I said to God, oh God, I'm not happy. What are you going to do about it? Never thought, what was God going to do about it? Not me. <laughs> and he said, why did you buy a house? I said, well, I could afford it, it fitted my criteria, it was a mess. No, 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 why did you buy the house? Well, I really liked it. And no, Paula, why did you buy the house? Bit of a Peter, do you love me moment. And I said, oh, so I could worship in a local church. <laughs> and so I thought, right, that's it. I'm going to the lane. And I came, and as I said, I knew quite a few people. And joined the very third and just fitted in. So that is my story. Uh, got involved in group, got involved in worship, all the things that I really love. Um, and God has, I can say that, um, not my journey, but God has very much blessed me at the lane. So I'm very proud to be a member of the lane and I'm very proud of its history. Isn't that great as well about God in the detail, both of Shirley's story being really specific about a back door, a front door, and a garden, and Paula as well, when God's reminding her, what, what is it that led you to the house? And she's like, oh yeah, it's specifically because I wanted to worship in a local church. So isn't that great that God's in the detail? Um, kids, you have sat brilliantly. Um, would you like to go off to your groups now? Lord, would you just bless our toddlers and our babies and our children, our young people? Would you just teach them more of you? Would they have fun this morning, Lord Jesus? And would you be with their teachers and thank you for their time and their servant heart? Amen. I also forgot to say before, um, oh, there you are. I couldn't see you. Um, we had two, a very special birthday last week as well. So our lovely Anne Jones, who's not looking a day older, 21, um, was actually 80 on Monday. Um, and Terry is going to be 80 this coming Sunday as well. So could we give them a big clap and happy birthday um, to you. And if you, anyone else has had a birthday in the week, happy birthday as well. Um, thank you. Um, so just before we go back to our second set of worship, um, Paul
Paul um, Battersby is back in um, hospital at the moment. Um, he's only got one remaining kidney and there's something that's wrong with his kidney. So I'm just going to pray for Paul. And I know that um, Paul um, and Nathan and Heather and the family would really appreciate um, your prayers for, for the dads and husbands at this time. So, Lord, we just lift up Paul to you this morning. We just thank you for him, Lord. We just thank you for his joyful spirit, Lord, despite all of the different physical difficulties that he has lord would you just heal whatever is wrong with his kidney now lord lord we just ask lord in in your blood that you would just heal him lord and that he would just fill you in your very presence in the hospital room with him this morning and lord would you be with heather this morning lord give her your peace lord and, and your blessing and encouragement, and Nathan as well, Lord. We just thank you for the joy that Nathan brings, Lord, for his massive heart, Lord, and his openness to your spirit, and all that he means. Would you just bless him and this morning help him know that he can trust his dad to you, his father, Lord Jesus. Amen. Well, so I've had a very busy week this week. Um, I've had a very long week of work, and on top of that, obviously, with having a little one running around, it's always a bit, a bit uh, extra, isn't it? Uh, and then you get home from work, and then your second job starts, and then you're, uh, you're tidying up all night, and then he wakes up early, and then yeah, every, and most people have been through that as well. Uh, but I've also been like really quite poorly this week, and I don't, I don't really make a fuss of being poorly at all, but um, it's really kind of been wiped me out and I've been coughing a lot and haven't been able to shake it at all. Um, and the band have been very patient with me this week. I was very late being able to send them the song list that we were doing. And so this morning I kind of feel quite unprepared. I just want to come and like just like let you guys know that as well, that usually you know, I'm able to spend a lot more time being able to kind of put a lot of thought into it and think about what God's what God's saying. And uh, this week, it's just been one of those weeks where that, that hasn't happened. But the great thing is, is that we can come this morning and then that doesn't make a difference because God is always going to have the same plan that he had if I'd have spent three hours prepping or if I'd had three minutes prepping. Um, and so I just as we come into this next, next um, period of worship, um, if you feel like that and you've had one of those weeks, I just want to encourage you that, that God is here if, if you've had a great week and you've had loads of time to, to spend with him or maybe you're feeling a little bit low and you're just coming to be recharged and uh, I just invite you now to, if you're able to stand um, and just as we come into this this place of, of worship I just want to start by praying Lord we just thank you that you are always here and that it doesn't matter what we bring or how we feel that you are the same no matter um, if we're at the top of the mountain or, or the bottom of the valley if we're feeling in full health or in low health or uh, we're feeling mentally fit or mentally weak, Lord, that we are just uh, just here to meet with you this morning. And just to encourage um, you to just come and move. Uh, we know that you're already here, which is, is just such a blessing, Lord. And we just invite you in uh, to our hearts as we just, uh, just come and engage with you now. my 
mighty name of Jesus. And every war he wages, he will win. Oh, I'm not backing down from any giant. Cause I know how this story ends. Yes, I know how this
walls down Spirit break out Heaven come down just singing a minute ago the battle belongs to the Lord and I just felt really in my heart there's someone struggling to sing those words there's someone in a battle and yes you're singing you've just sang those words there but in your heart you're struggling and you're finding it hard to actually have faith and believe those words the church has talked a lot about small groups share it if you're struggling, it really doesn't make, maybe you haven't shared it with friends, fat, whoever. Maybe you feel you've got no one you can share it with. Listen, the battle belongs to the Lord. You've heard Shirley talk about God heard her prayer right from day one. It wasn't that he heard it 15 years later. God heard that prayer the moment it was prayed. God's time isn't always our time. God heard that prayer, he answered that prayer. But if you feel on your own, or maybe you're not on your own, but you can't share, please, the battle belongs to the Lord. If you feel you've got no one, do not leave without praying, without sharing it. If you feel you've got no one, come and share it with me. Share it with Nick, share it with whoever. But if you want prayer with anyone, Give it to the Lord and somebody and share it.
every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. This is Judah's lion, uh, the lion of Judah, you might say. Um, but he's very small, and he can't do anything that Judah doesn't want him to do. And he only says what Judah says he said, um, which can be interesting sometimes. Is our God this small? Is he, you know, you can say, oh, I love, I love lion. Judah loves lying. But is that how big our God can be sometimes? Where we we say, you know, God can break every chain, Jesus can break every chain, and he can. But if he's this small, he can't. Um, and there's just something really in that that we're singing these songs to God Almighty, captain of the armies of heaven. This is not a small God. But if we make him too small in our lives, if we don't give him free reign, um, we cap what he can do. We make him small. So, Lord, I just pray. Open our eyes to get a revelation of who you are. Not weak, not timid, but God Almighty. Break every chain in our lives, Lord. Open the prison gates. Holy Spirit, move. Have your way. Amen. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. To break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. Let's say that again. Oh, there's an army rising up. Yes, there's an army rising up. Oh, there's an army rising up. To break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. Oh, this just felt really silly thing to share, and Gary might find this really funny, but just thought, I've got to share this, this is weird. But yesterday I was folding up the washing and I looked out, and I thought, oh, I need to clear it outside. There was a washing up bowl I'd left out accidentally over the winter, just left it out there. Oh, it looks like there's something in there. Got my shoes on, went out, it was full of frog spawn. The whole thing was full. full. I thought, it's full of pond water with like dirty rainwater. And I just felt God going, you just put it out there. And I filled it. And all he's asking is, in all of the things that you think he can't do, I would never think, oh, I'll create a pond. I'll do that out in the garden. <laughs> I just, I, I accidentally did something. But just by putting something empty out, God's filled it. And then he, I just felt him saying, put what have you got, you know, just put yourself there. He'll do the rest. Thank you. Oh, there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. 
in the name of Jesus to break every chain, 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 to break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, to break every chain. Just to give you a little bit of background, uh, nine months ago I was diagnosed with malignant melanoma in my leg. I've had two operations, four lots of infection. Last Wednesday morning, Jill and I went to see the consultant at Broad Green, and he said the words, completely cancer-free. All the glory to God. And a verse of scripture, a couple of verses of scripture I wanted to share with, with you because during that time, of, it's been like a wilderness experience. It's been very weary for Jill and myself and constant trips to the hospital, the dressing clinic and, you know, uh, disappointments of uh, appointments being cancelled at last minute. But in Proverbs chapter 4, verses 20 to 22, it says, My son, pay attention to my word, Incline your ear to my saying, listen closely to my word, for it is life to those who find them and health to all their flesh or to all their bones. And when I mentioned this to Jeff earlier, it actually says in the Hebrew, it's about God's medicine bottle. And I'd been neglecting getting into God's word on a regular basis because of being low in depression. But the more we actually get into God's word, there's healing. He can break every chain. So the longer we can actually spend in scripture as God speaks to us, he'll bring us healing, comfort, and strength and peace. To him, all the glory, the honor, and the praise. Lord, just pray for Ollie as he brings um, your word to us this morning. Just thank you for him, Lord. Thank you for the goal that you've put in him, for his big heart, Lord, to just reach out everybody um, that's that's vulnerable or just on the edges. He's just got such a heart to include people. And Lord, thank you for the gifts that you've given him. Lord, would um, the word that he brings um, today be exactly what um, you want each one of us to hear? Would you give him peace? Amen. I still need to get me a little table. <laughs> uh, so for anyone who doesn't know me, I'm Ollie. Um, it's great to be able to be speaking today. Um, so I head up the CAP services in our church, and I also work for a charity called Time for God, if you didn't know. And I really appreciate uh, Will just being honest about the struggle this week. I've certainly felt that, uh, both with the passage, just trying to get ready for this, but also just feeling a bit wiped out and not well. Um, hopefully I wasn't patient zero because lots of people are really sick this week and I definitely was last week, but uh, yeah, I'll seek forgiveness. Uh, but yeah, just, it's, 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 we're, we're looking at Mark 13 today and it, you know, it's, it's about prophecy, end times and realized history. There's a lot of death and destruction in it and it's, it's, it's a, it's a powerful passage, but it's quite a heavy passage, but I really feel like God has a word to share today. So let's just get into it. As Jesus was leaving the temple, one of his disciples said to him, look, teacher, what massive stones, what magnificent buildings. Do you see all these great buildings? Jesus replied, not one stone here will be left on another. Every one will be thrown down. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter and James and John asked him privately, tell us, when will all of these things happen and what will be the sign that they are all about to be fulfilled? Jesus said to them, watch out that no one deceives you. Many will come in my name claiming I am he and will deceive many. When you hear of wars and rumours of wars, do not be alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places, places and famines. These are the beginnings of the birth pains. You must be on guard. 
you will be handed over to the local councils and flogged in the synagogues. On account of me, you will stand before governors and kings and witness uh, as witnesses to them. And the gospel must be first preached to all nations. Whenever you are arrested and brought to trial, do not worry beforehand about what to say. Just say whatever is given to you at that time, for it is not you speaking, but the Holy Spirit. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child. Children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death. Everyone will hate you because of me, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. When you see the abomination that causes desolation, standing where it does not belong, let the reader understand. That's always an interesting part of the author deliberately putting something in there. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let no one on the housetop go down or enter the house to take anything. Let no one in the field go back for a cloak. How dreadful it will be for those days in, for pregnant women and nursing mothers. Pray that this does not take place in winter. Because those will be the days of distress, unequaled from the beginning, when God created the world until now and never be equaled again. If the Lord has not cut short these days, no one would survive. But for the sake of the elect, whom he has chosen, he has shortened them. At this time, if anyone says to you, look, here is the Messiah, or look, there he is, do not believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. So be on guard. I have told you everything ahead of time. But in those days, following the distress, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, people will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with a great power and glory. And he will send his angels to gather the elect from the four winds and the end of the earth to the ends of the heavens. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that, the su that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happen, you know it is near, right at the door. Truly, I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away um, until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. But about that day or the hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven nor the sun, but only the Father. So be on guard, be alert. You do not know what, when that time will come. It's a like, like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with an assigned task, and tells one at the door to keep watch. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the, the owner, when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight, or when the rooster cr crows or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you is, I say to everyone, watch. So it's a really interesting passage. Uh, Nick, Nick, I, I, he doesn't deliberately do this, but I seem to always get the ones about death and destruction. I go, I pick a week and I'm like, oh. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, the happy sermon will come next week, hopefully, as we come towards Resurrection Sunday. But... Um, there's so much going on here, so if anyone wants to come and say I've missed something, I will have, because it's a huge passage, but I'll try and, and take the things that have really stood out to me. And uh, it speaks of the times to come, both in, in history. Um, see, Mark was one of the earliest gospel writers, so he can, um, so he really believed the end times would come very shortly after Jesus' death. It was a very popular belief in sort of that, that time, if you look at Paul's letters, he does the same. He's expecting the end to come very shortly, but it doesn't. And it's particularly coming after some of the signs that Jesus has mentioned here. Um, and so he's, but the, the main part of the passage is preparing the believers to be ready. Uh, next slide. Sorry, it's not working, I think. Oh, there we go. Um, so just to give some context, it's the Tuesday probably just before Jesus' crucifixion. And it's instructing people, like when you listen to it, to flee and not turn back. 
And you know, nowadays we don't really wear cloaks, although I think we should all start a movement. Maybe we can bring it back <laughs> into fashion. But it's a bit like a modern-day Udi. So I don't know if you've seen one of those, but there's someone fashionably um, wearing one. Uh, Ted has one. He looks very cool in it. I don't think I can pull it off. Um, but, you know, it's, it was a real common garment in the ancient times. And actually, it's, it's so common, the Old Testament really states um, that if someone had a debt or you owed the money, you weren't allowed to take their cloak because what would keep them warm? It was like this really important thing. So when Jesus is warning people um, of a specific context as well, he, he's telling them to flee and not turn back. You know, a bit like that story in, in Genesis when he says, don't turn back and look at the city um, because death and destruction will come to them. It's this prophetic word um, of a specific part of con context about the fall of Jerusalem, but it, it also speaks uh, on multiple levels about the future times to come. And it's also a warning. Um, so the whole passage itself speaks about nationalism, tribalism, like this false religion and sacrilegious symbols. So all the really light stuff. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's really interesting when we think about nationalism and, and just basically if you look at the wars throughout history, a lot of it is caused. And we've got obviously some powerful modern contexts like World War II and the Nazis and the Soviet Union. Um, these are often linked as well to these like almost false religions and the utopian ideal. You know, there's lots of false religions today that we know of and people who mislead people, those cults. And I, I think as well, in modern society, particularly in the West, we have a lot of religious zealots, but they just don't have a religion to be zealous about. So they have a cause. They have this sort of ideal that they link themselves to. Um, and even though we're meant to be this enlightened people, people are actually probably more ideologically driven today than ever. And we need to be watch out as Christians that we're not sucked into this sort of secular Christianity. There's lots of churches that seem to do very good works, but they just forget the key point, which is Jesus. You know, it is so important. It's not like we do good works out of that. It's Jesus is the center of what changes us. Actually, we could, that's, that's what makes the church different to a other or agency and is the reason why it can do so much transformative power. And, you know, there's lots of these different spectrums of false teachers, and I deliberately don't mention people by name. You'll all be able to picture your own person that you don't like. But I always think that, actually, I don't know them, and the Bible teaches that we should speak to a brother and, and, and challenge them personally, so I can judge things. But there's lots of these prosperity gospel people who sort of... So they got to the floor, they stopped it. Richard ran out of the lift because he wanted to look for a doctor to come in to help her. And as he ran out and was like, doctor, come and help me, the doors shut behind her and proceeded to go down. So he comes back and is panicked. And um, Evie was born in a lift, very literally in about two seconds later. And so <laughs> uh, he went out to look to get some help. And it, this is obviously a bit of a tenuous link um, because she had the birth pains and they thought they were ready, but they didn't know when it was going to come. And it appeared that he had less time than he thought. Um, and so we need to be ready for this to happen. Now, I'm not sure if he could have prepared any better. I think that's just unfortunate. It's not the women's and, you know, but we need to be looking for the signs and just being prepared to do our good works, to prepare to do our, to live our faith as it's about to happen. And it also speaks about, are you ready to preach the gospel? It says we need to preach it to all nations and there was that great series we did, wasn't it? It was when you fast, when you pray. Uh, and I can't remember if we did say, if we did a bit, was when you preach to the nations. And preaching, you know, it's very easy as me at the front to say, yeah, we all need to preach. But preaching it doesn't necessarily involve this. It's speaking to your neighbours. It's, it's speaking to your work colleagues about Jesus. It's, it's offering prayer to people when you feel that sense and you think, am I going to be feel like a weirdo for praying for someone at a bus stop? We sometimes get them, and I, I know there's been plenty of times I don't necessarily listen. But there's an assumption that, that we will already be doing this. You know, maybe it's declaring the truth under pressure. When was the last time 
heady thing. You just say, do you know Jesus? It doesn't have to be intelligent. I'm not. I'm up here, and I'm smashing it. So, <laughs> um, Sorry, I've got a terrible cold still, so... Um, you know, some of us, I think, get very comfortable in our Christianity. Maybe we're in a workplace and you can think, when was the last time I actively prayed for someone? And that can be risky. You know, sometimes you have to put yourself out there and risk it. Sometimes people will tell you all sorts in work because you're the Christian and they might know that. And sometimes you have to go, oh, I'll pray for you. You know, Cap always tells you these great things where they go, if you offer prayer, no one will say no. I've had loads of people say no. I had one guy who was like, can I pray for you now? And he was like, no, nah, I'm all right. And I was like, I really feel like God might be able to heal. He was like, ah, oh, well. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> but I tried it. It did take me about three weeks to get there. You know, but I think you have to not worry so much because it does say the Holy Spirit will give you the words to say. So, you know, if it's a bit rubbish, you can say, what was that about, Lord? <laughs> Come on. But it doesn't always necessarily mean we're going to convert someone or to make someone believe in that moment. That witness is powerful and you just don't know what seeds you are sowing for, the, for, for later on. You know, the, like I said, the Christians here are under genuine threat and they, they're being pulled up. And sometimes I just think we need to think we're in a blessed place at the moment. Maybe we need to push out of those comfortable boundaries and we need to make a stand because the Lord says he'll bless us if we make that stand. And are you ready to understand the desolation and destruction? Like I said, if you came for Happy Sunday, that's next week. I don't know who's preaching. <laughs> uh, but this message speaks of this idea of like polyvaliency. That is a message that can speak then and a message that can speak today. Um, it speaks to a specific context, which is a prof prophetic uh, message about the destruction of the temple in Israel. It happens at about 70 AD. There's a war with the Romans between 66 and 73 where the, this, it's just eradicated. Here's some pictures of the eradication from like artists, but it wasn't very good. And I tried to read around this to find some chunks that were nice, and it is really quite a depressing topic. <laughs> but the temple itself, Josephus writes about it, says it's this amazing, beautiful thing that's got gold on it, and some parts of the day it looks like it's shining from like from miles away. You could see the temple because of the gold plating. It was like the pride of Israel. It had these massive stones on it. That's the, is there another really weird thing that Mark uh, records. Um, but this is probably a reference to Haggai, who says they put large stones on building the temple. It's this idea it's an immovable thing. But the problem with a temple is that the Jewish believers were boxing God into a place. You know, a bit like um, what Mark was saying before with the, the Lion of Judah, you know, the little lion. Have you made your God this big? Because they wanted it to fit really neatly into the temple to say, our God and the system is in here. God out here doesn't work. I can live like this. And Jesus was here to say the old system is done. I'm tearing down the temple because the temple itself as much good as it did, it became an idol in people's hearts. They boxed God in and put limits on, on him. And I believe that every time humanity does this, you know, God breaks out. Maybe like the Reformation is a good example of God saying, you know, you've boxed me in for long enough. I'll show you how I do. Because we partner in what God does. It's not the other way around. So it's known as the Missio Dei. It's the mission of God. And actually we partner in what God's already doing in the world. <laughs> he doesn't need us, but we get to be blessed to be part of it. And so, you know, we don't want to place these limits on God. Sometimes when we've gone through trials, we do this. Have we forgot what our faith means? A God who can move massive stones, you know, that's what Jesus is saying, this temple will fall. What massive stones have you put in your life that feel like immovable at the moment? And have you put those limits on God? It's a challenge, this passage, to try again. See, God had removed the blessing from the temple. That's what's happening when Jesus has come. Through his actions that are to come on the cross, he gives us his blessing. So instead of people seeing the shining light from a distance and coming to the temple to receive the blessing, we get given the Holy Spirit, we become the temple and we get to be sent out to preach the gospel to 
to set, spread that blessing to others. And you know, the temple in history had, had been destroyed before. There was also a Maccabean revolt in 160 BC where there was this abomination put in the temple. There's been lots of times where the temple had been disrupted and eventually to the, to the destruction. But with every downfall, there was an abomination, an idol that began the downfall. In fact, that's part of the reason Israel in the first time when Babylon, when Babylon invaded, it was because they had forgotten who their God is. Every time the abomination became before the fall and the temple had fallen probably long before it was destroyed, it had been taken over by those who subverted and changed what it should have been doing. You know, often we camp out in a place of sin, in a desolate place for a while, and then we'll eventually reap the destruction. Just because we're in a place of sinfulness doesn't necessarily mean we see the consequences straight away. And I think that's where the the devil's always want to, to lead us off slowly because it's not straight away we fall. It's a bit like a diet. You, can have a, you might have a cheat day, but if you keep having them, you're going to end up having, you know, <laughs> one of these. See, the, the new temple is our body and the spirit resides in us. And we become holy because of God's forgiveness and his spirit. But are you ready to sort your sin out? You know, sit in the camp, put it out. That's probably a really bad translation of numbers, but I liked it, so it's staying in. What abomination is in your temple? What part of your life doesn't hold up to scrutiny? You know, I really do believe that God is a comforter. In fact, I've preached on that before. So listen, if you've got a a mess in your life or you're in a place where you're just not on fire, it's okay, God loves you and he wants you to succeed and he wants to comfort you in your troubles But I also think God is the voice of a challenger. And sometimes we have to take a hard look at the stuff going on, whether it's anger. You know, that's something I know that I do struggle with. Whether it's judgment of others, whether it's putting others down, whether it's complacency, whether it's sexual sin, whether it's porn. If our body is the new temple then we may be placing idols within ourselves that we don't even realise. This sort of precursor to falling. And luckily we are saved by Jesus, you know, and there's there's place for that to be, to tear down those idols. But sometimes we have to be aware with what's going on in our life. You know, it's the pattern of humanity. We see it over and over again in the Bible. Don't camp out in the place of sin and wait for the destruction to come. Does your God sound and act like you. I sometimes read the scriptures, like I read this week and I really wanted to say something else. And sometimes we have to read what's there and let us challenge us, not not read what we hope it says or what we want it to say. We can't turn scripture to fit our needs. We need to be ready the realised desolation from sin and destruction that, that, it, that can, it can cause in our life if we, we don't challenge the idols that come up and the destruction that comes. And are you ready to learn the lesson of the fig tree? So the Bible speaks of fig trees and, uh, 44 times across Scripture. From Genesis 1, it's, it's not an apple. It, it's a fig tree, probably. That's what they reckon. You know... Um, Nick was speaking about it the other week, and so a chapter later, he mentions a fig tree again. You know, I think when he's mentioning stuff, he is speaking about fruit. Maybe he's cursing the tree because he's cursing the curse that came from the tree in, in the Garden of Eden, but that, I'm not going to go down that road today. But, like I said earlier, Jerusalem and the temple was destroyed in 70 AD. The religious zealots eventually took over, um, But around 66 AD, just before this happened, Eusebius, who's a church writer, if you type this in, Eusebius, uh, Christians Escape, it'll come up. It's a nice little quote, but I didn't want to put it up. Uh, Records most of the Christians escaping because they listened and saw the the signs of the time, and they escaped. So they they fled to the, the mountains, and then they fled to wherever else. So lots of them managed to escape because they listened to God's word. And it was just before spring... It happened, so as the leaves would be coming out, they were like, this is the time to go, and they left. 
and because by 67 AD, no one could leave. Even though it fell in 70 AD, it was sieged. It was a miserable time. Um, if you want to ask some uplifting stories, I'll tell you afterwards. <laughs> but they followed God's word and they trusted where it was leading. They knew to leave. And you know, the other week Nick was preaching about uh, fruit from the fig tree and whether we f- like have it. And, you know, when I've been reading over this, I've discovered some things about a fig tree, which is always useful. I'm not much of a someone who does gardening, but I learned some things. So figs har- um, have a harvest twice a year. So one is in late spring, which is May, May-ish, June, and late summer around August. So when Jesus mentions the fig tree again and the lessons we should learn, we need to, to listen up because it's repetition within the things. And we know that it's around Passover because it's just before his crucifixion, so it's probably about March, April-ish. So when Jesus is in Jerusalem, why did it matter that it had no fruit? Well, the fruit actually comes on the tree. It's called figlets. That's the word of the day you can have. It's a figlet. It's a tiny little thing. It's it's that thing there, um, I think. Um, And um, it comes in September, and it should last all the way till the summer, uh, till, till early spring, But if it's had a rough winter and it's not been protected from the frost, it loses its fruit. So are you ready to learn the lesson of the fig tree? See, in this passage, Jesus is preparing us now and the believers then that trials will come. He doesn't say that we're not going to face hard things. But he's saying that, you know, will we lose our faith or will, will we let our faith become barren because we've had a period of, of, of rough winter. And what's great as well as a fig tree to, to be protected from a rough winter needs people around it, just like the um, thing you'd brought before about that message. Who's around you? Who are you going to share? Because you need that around you to protect you from the frost. But, you know, we've all probably had these trials that have come in our life that have seemed to rob us of a fruit. I've had times where maybe I haven't had the most fruitful winter but we need, Jesus is saying, look, as Christians, come rain or shine, come winter or, or fire, you need to have the fruit. Because God has done good things and he wants to show it in our life. But what's also really good is that there's, there's two harvests here. If you're feeling barren, it's not the only time for fruit. God can start those little figlets now and you just need to grow. Don't get complacent and build those idols that can rob you of your fruit or let the long winter take it away. If you're feeling empty today, God can take that away from you and refill you. Don't let your Christianity become stale. You know, we need to learn the lessons from the fig tree. Don't become passionate again and and start producing fruit as Christians and let's continue to actually preach that gospel. Let us just pray. Father God, I just thank you that you're a God who knows us and loves us. And I just pray if anyone is feeling that barrenness that we have when we've had a long season of trial, maybe we just don't see the fruit and we need help. I just pray that you can help us gather around those people who need fruit. And if they're feeling empty, I just pray that you'll fill people so that they can show the the fruit of love, patience, peace, joy, self-control. And Father, if there are things in people's lives that need help, Lord, I just pray that you are a God who knows us and can help repair and restore the things that have been taken. We just pray this in your mighty name. Amen. You know, like I said at the start, I um, I d- don't feel like I have that much time to prepare this week, which is um, is always funny, isn't it? That God always has his uh, his own ways of working things out. Because I didn't even realise it when I was putting the songs together. But there's two songs that we we've, we've sung. We've already sung one this morning called "Sea of Victory." And we're going to sing one in a minute. Um, this is how I fight my battles. 
Um, and there's, there's lots of references to wars and fights and that. And in the, the passage that Ollie shared there, there was even a reference to being aware of wars and rumours of wars. Um, and one of the things that stuck out to me is you don't go to war on your own. Uh, and church is an amazing place for that because you're surrounded by brothers and sisters who are in that battle with you and fighting with you. But even more importantly, you've got somebody who is surrounding you and is even greater than the brothers and sisters that you're surrounded with. Uh, and, you know, when you are going through those wars, you can feel really on your own and exposed. But there, I just want to encourage you this morning, church, that there is somebody in that fight with you. And you might be right in the thick of it right now, but I just want to encourage you that they are with you um, the whole time as well. And there's that famous, um, uh, I don't know if it's a saying, it's not a saying, but somebody said, uh, I think Robert Murray M. Shane uh, said, if I was... If I could hear Christ praying for me in the next room, I would not fear a million enemies. Um, and I just want to encourage you, And then, because the end of that says, and he prays for me. Um, so God is praying for you, and he is with you the whole time. So I just invite you to, to stand now as we just um, just respond to what Ollie said and the challenges that we've, we've kind of listened to and the amazing words and uh, the way that God's spoken to us this morning. And we're just going to just respond in worship now. The Lord is my shepherd Can't 
how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. Oh, this is how I fight my says the Lord Almighty and just want us to remember that remember the words that people have shared this morning and um, like Will said at the beginning and you know not feeling prepared that it, that makes it all about us and it's so easy to do it isn't it I haven't done this and I'm not in the right place and I'm not good enough at this but it's not about us at all it's all about Jesus and about the mighty God the maker of heaven and earth and there is no situation that, that we can ever face that he is not more than capable of, of conquering and of standing by us, standing with us, goes before us. So just remember, I'll just speak that over us this morning. It's God's power and it's God's spirit and strength, not ours. So just have a fantastic week. We look forward to seeing you next week. And if anything that has been shared from the front, if Keith's word, Keith specifically said that God told him that somebody is really struggling with something and can't share it. Um, or, you know, if, if, if you're feeling you're in a battle, you know, and you're surrounded, please, please come and, Ollie, I know Ollie would love to pray with you. I would love to pray with you. One of the um, cat visits I did with Ollie last year for a really lovely single parent, Ollie did what he was saying before. We went about four weeks in a row, and every time Ollie said to this lady, "Shall we pray for you?" She was she she started off being like, "No, no," and then about three weeks on, she was just like, "No, thank you." So the fourth week we went, um, Ollie actually didn't ask her that day, um, and the lady actually said when we were going, "Didn't she?" I'm ready now. Can you pray for me now? And sometimes we've got to be in that right place as well. But don't miss out. You know, if you need prayer this morning, please, please, um, don't go home carrying something because because everyone's family come and ask for support have a great week and we'll see you next week at the bring and share as well
Thanks, guys. Just brilliant. It's brilliant. Thanks for carrying us locally today, guys. <laughs> Just get them all out now. <laughs>